Hello, so the next protocol we're going to show you is the preparation of a high titer lysate. Uh, lysates can be produced in liquid media or solid media. Um, solid media just tends to give more consistently high titers, but it is a more cumbersome process. So in industry, you'll tend to find people always grow phages in liquid, but here in our lab, we're going to do our high titer lysates in solid media. You will already have your, uh, the, uh, the titer from your picate from previous experiments, so you can calculate from the titer of your picate how many, uh, how many microliters of your picate is required to give you anywhere between um, 10 to the 4 to 10 to the 6 uh, PFU on a single plate. That number is variable because it depends on the size of your plaques. What we're trying to do here is, is lay just enough phages to cause confluent lysis throughout the entire surface of the plate, but not enough, no more than that. What actually happens is you'll get lower titers the more phages that you add beyond that maximum amount. So once you've got those calculations, you know the volumes that you need, and uh, you're ready to set up uh, to, for your uh, high titer lysate. Okay, so now we, we know the volume of uh, lysate that we need to make, our, uh, to make our HTL plates. We have our phages, our phage lysate. We have our label plate. I will take a tube. And much like whole plate titers, we're going to pre-incubate the phages with the host cells. I will take a 100 microliter aliquot of my host cells. And add that to the tube. And then I will take the calculated volume of phage lysate. And add that to the cells. We'll give that a little mix. And just like with the whole plate titers, we'll let that incubate together for five minutes. In this case, it doesn't really matter if it goes a little bit longer. But nevertheless, about five minutes should be good. Then when that's ready, I will take my pipetta, set it to the required volume. Aspirate the entire volume of reaction. Add that to our four mils of molten top agar. Vortex on low speed, again, trying not to introduce too many bubbles. And then as, as before, we just carefully pour in one motion all of that reaction. And we swirl it, we let it set, and then we incubate it overnight. So after incubation, the HTL plate should be ready. If you see a plate it's looking something a little bit like this one I showed you earlier where you can see that there's a lot of plaques on the plate, even more plaques than this, it's probably too low uh, PFU added to the plate. You do want to see something a little bit more like either one of these two plates and uh, we'll use this one for the actual extraction because this one has the least number of phages added to it that's given us confluent lysis as mentioned earlier. So what we need, now need to do is extract the phages from that soft agar overlay. So what we'll do is we'll add some uh, buffer to the top of this plate, and then we're just going to scrape gently off all of that soft agar with all of the cells and everything into a, uh, into a labeled tube. Then we will centrifuge that, that tube down to pellet all the debris and all the agar, and then we'll aliquot off the high titalizate from the top of that. Uh, from the top of that medium. So, as always, we make sure that our flame is in a safe place. Our bench has been sterilized, of course. And we're ready to work. My tube is already labeled up. I have my lambda buffer. And I'm ready to go. In this case, uh, for the class, we'll be doing uh, five plates for each student, but I'm just going to demonstrate with a single plate here. But all you're going to do is just repeat this five times over. So the first thing we do is we flood the plate with four mils of buffer. Mm. 
And when you're doing multiple plates, it's probably easier to get one 25 mil pipetta and just do four mils, you know, aspirate up 20 mils and just do four mils into five plates in one go. So the plate has been flooded and if you look, you can see already that you know, some of that soft agar is coming loose. I have two tubes. The second one will be used for the uh, after the spin to put the, uh, the lysate in once it's ready. And this is the one that I will put the, uh, the agar and the, uh, and the buffer into. So we take a sterile scraper and we can use whichever end you prefer. It makes no difference. And the trick here is just to gently scrape. You don't want to gouge the agar underneath and make sure you get the sides as well. So you can turn and just scrape until you've scraped gently the soft agar off of the entire surface of the plate. Again, just be gentle here. You don't need any force and you don't want to gouge into the, into the agar. Now the one trick here is that if I dump this this way, the liquid will hit the side here and will pour off of the bottom corner of the plate. So I want to put the plate over to the side so that when I pour the liquid, it runs into the tube. And then just carefully scrape all of the remaining material into the tube. Take your time, there's no big hurry. Once you're done, the plate is finished. That can go into the biohazard. These will be reused, so they shouldn't be put in here. But this tube is ready. Now you will repeat this. You will repeat this four more times. So you're gonna have sort of 20, 25 odd, or nearly 50 mils in, in here. And then it gets centrifuged. So we have now centrifuged our high titalizate. And as you can see, we have the pellet this side, and it's kind of loose. And we have the, uh, you know, the, 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 re the remaining lysate, the liquid fraction here. And now what we're going to do is filter sterilize it. So we have our filter, and we have our syringe. And what's very important with the filter is that right now it's completely sterile. And this tip needs to stay sterile the whole time. So you just need to be careful not to touch that tip once it's out of the bag or uh, you know, mess with it in any way. So what I like to do, actually the first thing I'll do is I'll take my syringe and we completely remove the plunger and I place the plunger back in the bag because I know that's a sterile spot. Can actually leave this here so as it stands upright and then carefully pellets this side liquid fractions this side so I'm going to pour this way Let me just pour the liquid fraction there'll be a little bit of uh, cell debris, maybe a little bit of the uh, top agar that goes in there. So we may have to use one, more than one filter, but that's not a problem. This is now useless and we get rid of it. We take our sterile fresh tube. And loosen the cap. What I can do, I can take the cap off and place it here again, because I know that's sterile. Take the plunger and making sure that I'm only going into the, uh, the tube, I can place the plunger on and just slowly start to press through. You don't want to use too much force, you can just completely blow through the, the filter so you'll then have to completely repeat again. If you're finding you're having to really sort of press down then the filter's clogged so you just replace the filter, your TA will help you with that. And Once all the material's through the cap goes back on, that goes in the biohazard, 
And now we have our filter sterilized high titalizate.